Named after a hill in the center of Kampala, Kololo has been Uganda's wealthiest neighborhood since colonial times, when it was previously inhabited by European expats and their Indian intermediaries. To this day, the area is highly prized for its serenity, serving as a respite from downtown's chaos and congestion. In this video, we will take a deep dive into both the day and nightlife in this exclusive Ugandan neighborhood. They try, but they can't get rid of me. I keep on coming with energy. I keep on bringing that energy. Energy, energy, energy. I feel on top of the top. I think I of the box. I won't fall into that box. Energy, energy, energy. Live up to my name. Go around, take the blame. Never wanted other fame. I stay away from that lane. I can still wake up and ball out. All in my court, I go ball out. Look at my baby go all out. Energy, energy, energy. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, come on. I could write this in my sleep. Say you don't sleep, but I sleep. That's why you're sleeping on me. Why? Energy, energy, energy. Don't say a word or a peep. No. Me, I'm just me, I'm me. We are now in the commercial side of Kololo, full of restaurants and shops that cater to its upper class residents. The first thing you will notice is the quality of the paving here, which is much higher than most other parts of Kampala. Do you think filming on this side would be a problem? Moving through this side? Yeah. <sighs> to the right, you have Acacia Mall, pronounced Acacia by locals. While mall culture is rapidly declining in the U.S., it is surging in Africa, particularly Uganda. The country has many well-known Western brands like Carrefour, Woolworths, and even Ashley Home Furniture Store, which was a big surprise to me. The security might bother us. So if, first, I don't know, yeah. But if we are just passing, I don't think they have anything. Yeah. We are just passing through. Or you wanna you want to like to enter in? No, I don't wanna enter. So we're just passing. You sure? Yeah, that's I realize with this guy, sometimes you just have to show them confidence. Don't mind and mean, mean your own business. They'll just yeah. look at you, just ask themselves, like, what is this guy doing? But, and maybe they'll assume you're working for the, for that, you're a journalist. the mall. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, something like that. Sometimes they think you're like collecting some news, you know, for some. Compared to other African countries I've visited, Ugandans are very relaxed about filming. For the most part, people just mind their business. People around here. Yeah, Kappa Siri. That's Kappa Siri, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one looks like um, our friend. Doesn't she? Martha? Ah, no. She's not the one, She just has the, like, the exact same figure. Yeah. <laughs>
This is the very best Kampala Uganda has to offer in terms of infrastructure and city planning. While Europeans planned the heavily forested residential areas of Kololo during the colonial era, the commercial part of the neighborhood was developed by Ugandans in the 2000s with a Keisha Mall opening in 2014. When it comes to urban planning in commercial areas, there is a big difference between European and African design priorities. While Europeans tend to favor dense, highly walkable designs, which you can find in downtown Kampala and older Ugandan cities like Jinja, Africans favor spread out and car dependent cities, similar to the United States. This is Kisimenti, a shopping street in Kololo. To the right, you can see some of the best restaurants in the city, such as Emirates Grill, where they serve excellent fruit smoothies, and Que Pasa, which serves Mexican food. On the upper levels, they have rooftop bars like La Teresa, catering to the upper class and foreigners. Unfortunately, you will notice that foreign-owned restaurants like these usually have much better customer service and quality than their Ugandan-owned counterparts. Whenever I see the crazy people, I get a little bit nervous. Pardon? Whenever I see the crazy people, you get a bit nervous with the camera because oh. they seem yeah, to react. Do yeah. He had good things, uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> You're not supposed to move with that camera here. Wow. You know, here there are a lot of calls there. One of them could be still in the school, but they have to wait until someone does some audio on me. Really? There are other lessons. They do that a lot to steal, kill someone, and then their family work on you. Their family works on you. This uh, road oh, down here. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's the name of the mall we just came from? This one. So this one. This is a fish mall. No, this this uh, the other place where they have Emirates Grill and all that. Oh, that one. Oh, okay. There are different buildings. Each building has its own name. Yeah, okay. I see it has the beast for it, but the name of the beast In the front, you can see Kenji's, a relatively new nightclub popular with the Bahima people, who are similar to the Tutsi ethnicity in Rwanda. It serves a younger clientele, mainly under 25. The older Bahima tend to frequent another club in Kololo called Maison Noire which is arguably the hottest spot in the entire city right now. It also features an extremely expensive fine dining restaurant, and it is not uncommon to see supercars in its parking lot. This place has transformed into very many things. Like every business that goes there never lasts it was. six months. That wow. Put a bar, failed. Put a restaurant, failed. Put a fish like they sell, a shop like where they sell fish, failed. Like every time they put something, it never lasts six months. They 
someone else comes and tries and then goes <laughs> and goes. But you see, you would think it's a good location. Yeah, just but... This is the last video in my Uganda series. Thanks for making it this far. We will do two bonus videos from Rwanda before moving on to the next country. By the time you see this video, I'll already be there filming. This way to Fat Cats. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's fat cat? Fat cat, I don't know, maybe it was a restaurant or something. Because it, that's, that's that red building actually in there, but it's no longer active. No, it's okay. Then we have really never checked these these places. We've never checked them out. Yeah. yeah. Ah, Saturday would have been the best time. Yeah, like, yes, I Yeah. Mm. This is actually like a bar street. Yeah, with a lot of them. But so you can just imagine at night on a Saturday the vibe would be yeah, quite coconut. good. Anyway, I still have, I still have time. another Saturday, another Friday. So you see this, uh, like to live in this part of Kampala, how much um, do you think it costs per month? Like per month? I think yeah. you should be able to pay a million and above. A million? Yeah, but that's million. just like, that's like oh, 270. 800. Yeah. That's not much. Yeah, uh, it's not much, yeah. For yes, a but not a lot of people make that much to pay for rent. For in, a, in, a, in, a, in an apartment? Pardon? In an apartment? Yeah. Not a lot of people make much to pay. Okay, there are people who can make a million. But on that million, that's where they have to pick the rent, yeah, the yeah. food, school fees, medical and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's possible to make a million. For you to pay rent of a million shillings, you should be able to make like three or four million. Yeah. In that you can pick the, the one million, then the four remains for other stuff. Yeah. yeah. And that's what pops up the question for me, like, how much do Somalis, the Ethiopians, and the Ethiopians make to live in those fast Well, see, the, well, I, I think, know, think what they're... they're free money by the UN. Well, I think with them, they're just, like, packing three families in one... In one apartment. Yeah. Yes, that's what they do, actually. And you find many of them, so when they get that money of theirs, like, the money they give them, like, because they say they give per head. Yeah, so, so just the imagine. Kids, and so they just pick just small, small amount, make up that one huge amount pay, and just maybe imagine. the rest. They buy cars and all that. Yeah, they're just funding them to take over. <laughs> and I'm sure these businesses they have, they're just pulling together all that free money. And, yeah. Like imagine 10 people getting free money. They can buy a plaza even. Yeah, they can buy a plaza. They can buy land, put a field in. Let's check out the nightlife. This might be a good time to talk about Uganda's booty standards. I mean, uh, beauty standards. Like in many African countries, Ugandan men prize a big butt above all else. This is considered to be the top sign of attractiveness in a woman, ahead of things like face or skin color. But skin color is also important. Men generally favor lighter skinned women. But in Uganda, almost everyone is considered light skinned even those who would be classified as dark in the U.S. Here, dark means an erotic skin tone, which would be found in the northern part of the country or South Sudan. Where do you go from? Uh. This is H2O, my favorite club in Kololo. They have an event called African Monday every week, which features live music from the hottest local artists. The owners are Eritrean, and the waitresses in blue and red African prints are imported from Rwanda and Burundi. In the highly competitive Kampala bar scene, businessmen must use every tactic to attract customers.
Eventually, the place becomes so packed that it is difficult to move. Some independent ladies enjoy their time at the club. They have their own money and don't need a man to buy their drinks. A waitress brings in another bottle of wine and the twerking stuff. Eventually, the live music starts. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for one and only, Mark B. Oh, my God. 
Finally, the moment everyone has been waiting for. Alien Skin, the country's hottest artist at the moment. The people party deep into the night. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my other Kampala walking videos to the right and left of your screen, and I'll see you in the next video.